inside the five pillars of Islam. I wrote, No God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam is the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you, Noor Kids. A lot is. Assalamu alaikum, Noor Kids. This is my pop of, pop of card. Pop of card. That is the cheek. This is my message. This is the moon, crescent moon, and these are stars. And it has happy Ramadan to to everyone. To everyone, uh, pray for Palestine. Assalamu Assalamu alaikum, brother. I mean, this was the. This was so. This was so much fun. Jazakallah khairan. <coughs> Assalamu alaikum. I'm Sahil. And I'm Amon. We would like to show you our Ramadan Mubarak pop up card. We use black construction paper to make the mosque. And we also use yellow construction paper to make the windows. And we use the yarn to stick the star yarn. Even we use some of our mom's glitter to do all the glitter so it'll look like it's raining stars. Even we added the star, but no one colored it. We hope you enjoyed our card. Bye. Bye. Assalamu alaikum, Noor kids. This is my pop up card. Assalamu alaikum, Noor kids. This is my DIY flip marble card. I need to show drum roll, please. Assalamu alaikum, Noor kids. Bye. Assalamualaikum, new kids. I will be showing you what I made for my marble card. So I made a marble card. Just I didn't use shaving cream because I didn't have any, so I just decided to use marker. And it says Hanuma. That is new kids. Assalamualaikum, new kids. My Madam. name is Bitsy. And my name is Madia. And today we're going to be doing DIY marble cards. This is my marble card. I used the colors green, purple, blue, yellow, and black. And I used the word Bismillah because we use it every time we do something. And this is Mariam's marble card. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Hannah. And Laiba. And I have made this card that Sister Gina has showed us. My word is Al Wahab. And I am thankful for my friends, my mom, and the guidance Allah has given us. Thank you. Hi, my name is Laiba. And I chose the word Al Wahab. Al Wali. Al Wali. And this, um, and I'm thankful for the Quran, my mom and dad, and my life, and we're kids. Thank you. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum, we're kids. I made a pop up card challenge. So here I wrote, no kids from around come 2024, and here I wrote, thank you, no kids, and Ramadan is Hope you like my pop-up card. Assalamu alaikum, Noor Kids. My name is Ida, and this is my pop-up book that I had made. It is called the Furry Friends Pop-Up Book, and it is made by me, Ida. The first page includes some trees and a bear. And the doggy. The doggy is walking towards the bear. It is a really cute scene. The next page includes a bunny, 
some trees, and a bunny and a cat. Seems like they're having fun. That is my whole pop-up book. Hope you liked it. I love this snore, kids. I sound like a little kid. This is my marble painting, which I made with a paintbrush. And the paint. And paint. And the word. And the word is subhanola because when the, every time when I read it, I get rewards. I get rewards. You should say it too. You should say it too. Um, hi, everyone. So my my card is right here. It's a poem about Hajj. It says, Allah, Allah, here I come. Um, on my journey to do Hajj, with a pure heart in Ihram, to fulfill your command, Allah, Allah, accept my Hajj. You are truly the best of judge. This is Amina, this is Shaheen. This is Asha, this is Amin. This is the Muslim tree house. Assalamualaikum, my name is Adni and I am from Singapore. Here is a picture of my profile plan. Ramadan Nora. Assalamualaikum, little kids. I'm going to do um, the um, marbled um, Quran card challenge. So let's get started. So I have some shaving cream here. So cream. I'm just gonna shake it up and spray it all over my tray. Now I have to spread it out with my knife. So it's pretty evenly spread. So now I just need to put the down. So now I have to take my tie dye and mm, drop little spots of it up. Just oh, press not. it down, soften. Now I have to scrape off the excess tie-dye, tie-dye, this look so cool, tie-dye, tie-dye, look so cool. Assalamu alaikum, Nuggets. Today there is a celebration and I need a pop-up book right now. I have to call um the art shop. Hello? I need a pop-up book right now in only one hour. One hour, I have to work right now. Now I am done. Now I have to deliver it. It has been so long. I haven't get my papa book. I would be late for the, the celebration. Oh, who can that be? Who is it? It is your package. Ooh, let's see it. Wow, looks great. It says, pray for Palestine. Let's open it. OMG, look at this. It is a Noor kid's office there. And here it says, Ramadan Mubarak. And there's a moon. That's so good. Look, a Noor kid's office. Now I have to get going. An office, Noor kids. Do you like to keep your room clean? What? You don't? Today we are going to be reading a story out of this book called Half of Faith. After that, we are going to be learning how to make stop motion animated videos. And then we are going to be giving away millions and millions. Let's begin.
my teeth. I am 18 years old, yes, 18 years old, and I wake up with excruciating pain in my teeth. Let me explain. You see, ever since I was six years old, I would go to the dentist, and every time I'd go to the dentist, my dentist would pretty much say the same thing. She would say, Amin, floss your teeth. But I was a busy kid. People to see, babies to kiss, places to go, things to do. Ain't no one got time for that. And so when I'd go back the next year to the dental office and things would go precisely as I would expect, I'd walk in, I'd check in, I'd read some magazines, Pat the dentist would welcome me back, look at my teeth and ask me again, Amin, are you flossing your teeth? And I would say, well, sir, you know, I've been busy, I've got places to go, people to see, babies to kiss, I'm a busy young man. And I would go another year and come back to the dental office. And it would happen again and again and again and again and again and again until I was 18 years old. Where one day I went to sleep with just a little bit of pain in my tooth and I thought, huh, it's probably just something stuck in there. Maybe I'll get it the next day. But when I woke up the next day, Allahu Akbar, it was the worst pain I had ever felt in my entire life. I thought to myself, oh my goodness. I remember going to my bathroom, grabbing, grabbing my toothpaste and toothbrush and first trying to brush it as good as possible to make the pain go away. And when that didn't work, I grabbed the floss and I tried flossing once tried flossing twice, tried flossing three times, and nothing made the pain go away. I had to go to the dentist and get a root canal, and I have to tell you, it really hurt. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this story is quite simple. You see, Many of us get instructions from people. It could be our dentist saying, floss your teeth. It could be from your mom or your dad saying, clean your room, wash your hands, take a shower. And we might not take it super seriously. And we think, ah, I've gone a day or two without doing it and I'm just fine. But the truth is, there's a reason why we stay clean. When we take care of our body and when we take care of what we have, it's one of the best ways to stay safe and to make sure that we're thankful for our blessings. And that is what we are going to be talking about today. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Amin Asr, and today I will be your host in the Muslim Treehouse, where every single week throughout the whole year we do classes, not just during the month of Ramadan. Let's say salam to some of the people who are here with us today on the Zoom community. Let's see who we got over here. I see Umar from Canada. I see Maisha and Arham. I see Samara from Texas. Diana and Ijaz from England. I see Aisha from Houston. I see Aquila from New Zealand. I see Jawan from Ireland. I see Ramin from Mississauga. I see Abdullah Balaji from Canada. I see Yusra from Illinois. I see Hanifa and Halima. I see Salma from Birmingham. But she's not smiling. Salma, where's the smile? There it is. I see Dua from Australia, who's got her little stuffed animal next to her. I see Arya from Calgary, my dear. I see Naraz from Dallas. I see Abdullah and Abdurrahman and Zainab and Zahra from Philadelphia. Okay, 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 okay. We are not here to just say salams to people. No, 
We're here to do our program where every day we don't answer a small question or even a medium-sized question. No, we ask a big question. Why in the world do Muslims stay clean? That is a good question. Now, before I answer that question, I need to talk about some business, which is our giveaways. Yesterday, we offered up probably one of the coolest prizes we've done all year. A Nintendo Switch. Yes, a Nintendo Switch. We offered it to one person who, if you guys got 100 people who submitted on Flip, which you did, and uh, we picked one person who had done a really good job expressing their pledge and their du'as for Palestine. Let's watch it. Assalamu alaikum, Lord kids. I would like to share the letter that I wrote for Palestinian boys and girls and for their encouragement and support. Dear Palestinian boys and girls, you are not one. I am with you. Our beloved Ummah is with you. Most importantly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you. Suffering you are going through right now is terrifying to hear. And as the Muslim Ummah, we had to fight back. The protests for Palestine are so supportive and there's so many people. And you know, it's rightly justified because this is not fair. But the support you guys have is amazing and incredible, mashallah. Now, our sister over here... Oh, look at that sound. That sounded awesome! Can we do that again? That was awesome! Why don't you open the box? Hold on. Allahu Akbar! Every time I open it up, the sound comes? <laughs> it like broke a little bit, but I just had to, I, I had to, I had to like twist a little part. Oh, <laughs> you guys, this is insane. All right, look, um, that sister did an amazing job. And look, t on Thursday, we're doing our special program for Palestine. So I encourage you to watch what other people have submitted. And I want you to put your pledge and your prayers for Palestine, as well as your artwork, okay, for Awakening Hearts. But today... We're also going to be, Allahu Akbar. No, Jake, I don't think we should do this. It's too much. Should we? Okay. All right, we've got another huge giveaway today. All right? But let's head on over to the library. So, what is your most prized possession? That is the question I am asking you today on Nearpod. I'm going to be sending you the login details in just a moment for you to join. Allow it to get started. There we go. And I'm going to send over the information on Zoom. What is your most prized possession? Now, while you guys are logging into Nearpod and sharing your answers, we actually have a little video from Noor Kids about our character building program. And we're going to play that in just a second. Family matters. Bruce is in front of me. We discuss topics that matter. Divine direction, being big hearted. It's afterlife, honest to God, the miraculous message, can't you see? Take the high road. This is about doing the right thing even when no one is watching. Hungry for halal. It has a lot of food in it. The Family for me is my favorite book because it teaches me to be thankful for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me. Pray, you get your soul will be clean. If you don't pray, your soul will be dirty. Our books prepare kids for the world that they are living in. Not just to survive, but to thrive. Kids can put themselves into the main shoes and think, what would I do in this situation? So that way, when they find themselves in that situation, they know the right way to respond. And my favorite book is See the Bright Side because it teaches you that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover and not everything's as it seems. 
Now look, you guys, this entire month of Ramadan, I've told you a little bit about Nora Kids. And this week is the week when I'm inviting you to join. Because starting today and for the next five days, that's it. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. We're letting families join for one dollar. That means when you go on norkids.com and you spend one dollar, we're going to ship you this right over here. And in it, you will get your very first book, you will get a parent's guide, and you'll get your passport where you're gonna be able to collect all of the badges for one dollar. Oh my goodness, Jake, did you come up with that idea for one dollar? It costs more to ship it. Jacob, come on. Oh, but they're gonna love it? You're gonna love it. Honestly, you're gonna love it. And so, uh, truly, if you enjoy our work and you want to stay connected, inshallah, and continue to benefit, norkids.com and take advantage of it before it's gone. All right, let's go back to see what people have written. So, uh, Mariam from Wisconsin says, my computer, or I like to say my commuter. Um, Geneva says, Islam, healthcare, parents and education. Healthcare is a very mature thing to say. Healthcare is actually a very prized possession. A lot of people don't have it. Like, if you get sick, the ability to go to the doctor, a lot of people don't have that. Um, Asya S. says, my most prized possession is my stuffed llama. Oh my goodness, I wonder if Asya is here. Let's see if she's here. Asya S. Now again, you always want to use the same name on Zoom as you do on Nearpod. So let's see if Asya... Oh, Asi S is here, but her video is off. Asi S, can you turn your video on? Let's see if she can. Um, ask to start video. If she can't, that's okay. No worries. We can just imagine her stuff llama. I bet her stuff llama is super, super nice. Okay. Uh, Ibrahim and Yusuf says, my Lego. Ibrahim and Khadija says, my slime. What kind of slime is this? Let's go to Ibrahim and Khadija. Let's see if we can check out this slime. Oh, Asi S also has her video on. Let's go to Asi S first, okay? Hey, Assalamu alaikum, Asiya. Alaikum assalam. Word on the street is that you've got the stuffed llama of people's dreams. Is that true? <laughs> yes. Can we see it? Do you have it with you? Um, my mom's getting it right now. Oh, okay. Now, Asi, does your stuffed llama have a name? Um, yes. I used to sleep with it as a kid because I would really want my mom to come to bed, but she couldn't because she had to do stuff. Mm -hmm. So I would sleep with her instead. Oh, my goodness. I love that. Did she have, like, your mom's perfume on it, too, or no? Oh, my mom doesn't wear perfume. Oh, okay. That's the stuffed llama. Oh, I love it so much. Does it have a name? I call it Mama Llama. Mama Llama. Oh, my God. I, need, I think everyone needs a Mama Llama. You know, my daughter, she goes to sleep with my, my wife's hijab. So she's got like a headscarf. Because, of course, my, my wife can't come to the bed all the time either. So she'll sleep with the headscarf and, like, that's, like, her little jam. Oh, that's great. And it's a mama llama. Now, and how old are you and where do you live? Um, I live in Texas, Jackson, Texas. Nice. And I'm nine years old. So now let me ask you a question. You care about this mama llama? Yes. So, like, do you try to keep it clean or do you just, like, throw it this place and that? I usually keep it on my bed in the bedroom. I love that. You guys, let's give Asya and the Mama Llama a big round of applause. <laughs> ah, I love it. I love it. Oh my goodness. I think everyone needs a llama called a Mama Llama. You know what? I think we should get a Mama Llama for the Noor Kids treehouse. Like that, that was one of my favorite things that ever happened. Okay, let's see what else we got over here. Um, I wonder if anyone else has Mama Llamas. People says, oh, oh, Ayan and Rayan says, my stuffed toy cat. Let's go to Ayan and Rayan. They also have a stuffed toy cat. Oh, my goodness. Assalamu alaikum. What's up, gentlemen? <laughs> hey, salam. Hey, you guys, I can't, I can't hear you guys. Gotta, you guys got to just speak calmly, okay? If you guys yell, then I won't be able to hear you, okay? 
All right, Ayan and Rayan. Alaykum. Alaykum. So who is Ayan and who's Rayan? I'm Ayan. And I'm Rayan. Are you guys twins? Yes. No! Oh my goodness, Jake, it looks like there's two of them. But there's not. Oh my goodness, there's twins. There's two. Oh my goodness. So who's who's older? Uh, I am. I. By a minute. A minute. He, he does look older, actually. He does. You do look older, right? Like, just... I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, so now... You guys said that you guys have a prized possession, which is a stuffed cat. Is that true? Yeah, my mom just bought it for me. Oh my goodness. Now, you guys share it, or is it one that you guys like? I'm not going to let anybody take it. It's yours. Yeah. So, so, Rayan, this belongs to you. Yes. And what makes this stuffed cat so important to you? It, it, it just says that's all. I don't know why. Does it have Can a name? I, it's it's Coco. Do, what's what's the cat's what's its name? Coco. Now, do you do you like uh, try to keep Coco clean, or like do you just throw throw Coco around? Like, how do you treat Coco? I I take, I sleep with him every night. Dude. Like I mean, every single night, and I and I like to. I like to take him downstairs when it's in the morning when it's breakfast it's time and I'm going to and I keep him on the couch because I don't want him getting getting dirty because of you, the food. Oh man, you don't want him to get dirty, so you don't keep him on the ground. You keep him on the couch. You gave him a name, Coco, Rayan, and Ayan. Amazing, you guys. Let's give Rayan and Ayan big rounds of applause. That's what <laughs> I'm talking about, gentlemen. Yeah. All right, so here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Every single one of us has prized possessions. Of course we do. We may have different things that maybe our parents have given us. Or maybe it's even our body. But just like Ayan and Rayan gave their pet cat a name, Coco, and just like Asya gave her pet llama a name, Llama Mama, because she loves it so much and because she takes care of it. Did you know that our Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would give each of his possessions a name. He would name his sword. He would name his turban. He would name his cloak. He would name his shield. He would name the bowl that he would eat from. He gave everything a name. Why? Well, because he thought to himself, Every one of these possessions is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because it's a gift from Allah, I have to take care of it. Now look, why do we have to clean our rooms? Why do we have to keep our things clean and tidy? In order to answer that question, we are going to be reading a story out of one of our books called Half of Faith. This story is called Careless with the Camera. Now, of course, every one of our books has two stories in it. I'm going to be reading one story. You know, every time I say that, I go home and my wife is like, you know, Amin, you should tell the people that there's activities in there too, like Spot the Differences and like Islamic Inventions and like Arabic with New York Kids and like all these activities because the people might not know you guys, there's a lot of activities in there too. Okay, anyways, I'm going to be reading one of the stories called Careless with the Camera. Bismillah rahman rahim Asad and Amin spend the afternoon skateboarding. They're going next to a shop called Extreme Tech. Look, says Asad. He points to a camera. The Ultra HD Camera 3000. Masha Allah, it's perfect, says Asad. Um, do you really need that? asks Amin. Yes, the pictures I take on my nature walks will be outstanding with the 3000, says Asad. When Asad gets home, he's excited to ask Dad for the camera. 
Please put those in your room, Asad, says Asad as he throws his stuff down in his room. Allahu Akbar, he just throws it down when he comes into the house. Who would ever do such a thing? Throwing their jacket and their shoes and their bag when they come home, not even putting it where it belongs. Who would do that? Who would do that? Okay, sorry, I'm being too dramatic. I'm talking about you guys. Many of us do that. Let's not lie. Let's be honest. Asa dumps his skateboard, helmet, and knee pads in his room. Dad, can you buy me the Ultra HD Camera 3000? Please. What happened to the camera you have? Says Dad. I still have it, but I need this one, Dad. Sorry, son. You just got to make do with the one that you have says dad. Asad thinks to himself, I'll just have to convince mom and dad to get it for me. Later in the living room, Asad says, may I please have your attention? What is this about? asks mom as she's reading a book. Is that my tie? asks dad. I have some statistics to share with you, says Asad, as he's dressed up in, his, in a very professional outfit wearing a tie. He's giving a presentation to his parents. The benefits of the Ultra HD Camera 3000. Dad says to Mom, he wants us to buy a new camera. Another one, says Mom. Asad completes his presentation. Reason number 23. Thank you for my new camera. And finally, with the camera, I calculate that I am 24% more likely to graduate from college. Amin, or sorry, Asad, puts on a big show for his parents, trying to convince them to buy the camera. So how about it, asks Asad. That's quite the presentation, but... Asad, you get excited to have new things, but then quickly forget about them, says Mom. I agree with your mother, says Dad. But I won't do that with this camera. You say that now, but... Fine, says Asad. Asad walks off in defeat. Allah. You guys know that. Fine. And then he just walks away. Fine. Okay. I'll just go to my room then. I guess. I like, well, I like, I like want the camera, but like, if you don't want me to be happy, then I like, okay. <gasps> All right. Sorry. We'll get back to the story. You guys, this, the drama is just so spicy. Spicy drama. Later, Dad comes back to tuck Asad in for the night. This is my tie, says Dad. I wanted to look nice for the presentation. But it didn't work anyway, says Asad. Son, it's not that we don't want you to get the camera. It sure looks like that, says Asad. When you don't keep your things neat and tidy, it's disrespectful to the people who gave those things to you. But I do take care of my stuff, Dad. Dad looks around the room. Your room is a mess, Asad. Look at it. There's a skateboard, batteries. There's a car. There's a helmet. Looks like there's socks. There's a telescope, books, tape, scissors, tools. Asad says, I just like to keep everything on display. Like a museum. Okay, let's go to the group to see if there's any questions or if you guys have answers to the questions. All right, let's go to somebody named Mumtahina from Virginia. Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing, Mumtahina from Virginia? I'm doing good. Oh my goodness. Are you doing good? Are you doing. Supercalifragilisticexpialidociously awesome. Supercalifragilisticexpialidociously awesome. Yes! Yes! I love that. Okay. 
I had to tell you, like, I'm fasting, and so, like, honestly, before I start the program, I'm, like, so tired. I'm like, oh, I'm just sleeping. But then when I meet people like you, I get so excited. Okay, so now question for you. Question. Dad is saying to Asad that his room isn't very tidy. Is Asad's room very tidy? No. Now, if somebody doesn't take care of their belongings, like the stuff that they've been given, does that sort of show that they don't respect what they have? Yeah, that doesn't really show that they're respecting their stuff. If you respect something, how do you take care of it? By keeping it clean. Don't, like, leave it on the floor. You, like, put it where it belongs right like imagine if you had a shirt that you really loved you wouldn't just like throw it on the ground no you would hang it nicely after you use it you know you wouldn't like 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 spill stuff on it like you'd be very careful right so now dad is telling Asad that he's feeling like I don't want to give you another camera because he's not taking care of what he has does that seem fair? Is that kind of fair for dad to say, hey, you're not taking care of what you have. Why should I give you more? Is that fair? Yeah, that's, that's fair. That's very reasonable. Now, who's this little bundle of sunshine who's come? Who is that? Ailia. And is that, your, is that your big sister? Yeah. That's your big sister, right? No. Now, you guys, there's a lot of people watching. Allah's also watching. Mumtahina, it's not good to lie. That is your big sister. Just tell the people. Be honest. It's okay. I'm the little sister. You're the little sister? Yeah. No, you're not the little sister. You're the big sister. Don't give me that. Are you really the little sister? Yes. I knew that. I'm just kidding. All right, you guys, let's give Mumtahina and her little sister a big round of applause. Nice. Oh, my goodness. What a cute little sisters. Oh, my goodness. MashaAllah. From Virginia. Okay. Let's go back to the story. Anyway, Mom and I discussed it. We decided to rent the camera for you. Now renting means they're not buying it, they're just going to borrow it and let Asad use it for a short period of time. Jazakumullah khairan, says Asad. If you take good care of it, then we'll buy it for you. I'll take care, I'll take the best care of it, I promise. On his next nature walk, Asad brings the rented camera. <sighs> MashaAllah. These images are crystal clear. Look at these photos. Allahu Akbar. At home, Asad carefully wipes the camera lens and stores it in the box. Nice and tidy, says Asad. The next day, Asad takes pictures at Amin's game. Look at that. I'm like a professional photographer now, says Asad. He's loving it. At home, Asad wipes the camera lens but this time he forgets to put it in his box. Several days pass and Asad no longer cleans the lens or puts the camera in its box. Time for dinner, Asad. Coming, Mom, says Asad as he comes down. Okay, so now it seems like Asad isn't taking care of the camera anymore. Huh. Let me go to the group, see if someone can answer some of my questions. Um, let's try to find somebody f like, all right, here we go. Pokemon Imam Ash. Oh my goodness. Hey, Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum. Allahu so, Akbar. No, Is this the Pokemon no, Ash Ketchum? No, I'm someone else. else I'm at, well, 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 I'm. Pokemon Imam Ash Muslim Ketchum. Oh my goodness, I love it. I forgot, Jake, we have to officially do costume day. Did you dress up for costume day? 
Yes. Yes! Oh my... And you have your Pikachu! Allah! Is it a Muslim Pikachu or is it just a regular Pikachu? It's, it's my Muslim Pikachu. Well, Pika he... Well, sometimes I have rough times. I'm teaching Pokemon on about Islam. I'm the ones I catch. So Pikachu is always there to help me. I love that. I love that. You know, a lot of people don't know this. Pikachu, um, you know, he is um, um, uh, he is Japanese. Okay, but he no, he's doesn't. An anime. And he's an anime. Oh, but he I, is an yeah. He's a lover of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. A lot of people don't know, but you you told them you, you spilled the beans. I love that. Okay, so now let me ask you a question. By the way, I'm well, I'm loving the outfit. This is such a great outfit. Do you is it common for somebody to s sort of like get something and be really excited about it, but then after a couple of days they like forget about it and like it starts to get boring and they just kind of like lose interest? Is that kind of common? Yeah, sometimes, but so, but but sometimes you might have something really special. Well, and if you have a lot of things you consider special, then it's not really common. Yeah, so if it's something that you really do love, of course you're going to take care of it. But if you don't really love it, then maybe you might not take care of it anymore. Is that fair? One sec, um, can I just, just read a quick book about Islam? You know what? You know what? Let's do this. Just because um, we have like a little bit of a time sensitivity with our program, let's not read the book right now, but I love the idea. Maybe what we'll do is on flip, we'll do a show and tell, and we'll ask you and other people who want to read books to read books. How does that sound? Well, actually, my mom doesn't let me. Well, actually, I don't really participate in flip, which is unfortunate. So you got to ask your mom. Because here's the thing, we have now almost 3,000 people on the FLIP community, so if you're not on the FLIP community, then you're missing out on an opportunity to get to know all the other kids here. But regardless, I want you to know, Ibrahim, a.k.a. Imam Ash Ketchum, Mr. Pokemon, you did such a good job, and I want everyone to give you a huge round of applause. You guys, let's give them a huge round of applause! Let's go! Oh my goodness, that was amazing. You know what? I have to say, watching Ibrahim in his costume made me think that we totally should do costume day. So I'm not going to wait. I'm just going to say it. We're going to announce it. Tomorrow is officially costume day. I want you to come in your costumes and let's have some fun with it. All right? Tomorrow, costume night. Be there, be square. All right. Here's the thing though, right? Uh, what I was talking to Ibrahim about and what he had said is this. Sometimes when we get something, it's not uncommon for us to like forget about it and then we don't care as much about it and then, you know, we don't take it seriously and it's not okay, all right? So let's go back to the story and see what happens. Crash, what was that, says dad. Um, I'll go see, says Asad. Asad goes to his room and Allahu Akbar, he sees. Oh no. Oh no. His camera is broken. It fell down. <gasps> what have I done, says Asad. It's all my fault. I wasn't keeping my room clean or taking care of my stuff. Ya Allah, please help me fix this. Asad decides to tidy his room. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I promise, from now on I will take care of my things to show my parents how much I do respect them. Just as Asad finishes cleaning, Amin and Hasib come up to Asad's room. Salamu alaikum, says Amin and his older brother Hasib. Wa alaikum salam. Wow, your room looks amazing. What's wrong, dude? asks Hasib. I broke my camera. Asad tells him what happened. Hasib's an expert on fixing these types of things. Well, I'm not an expert, but I think I can fix this, says Amin's older brother. Hasib fixes the camera. There, good as new. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Hasib, says Asad. No worries, says his older brother.
So Assad, Hasib is taking me to the movies. Your folks said that you can come too. Sure, but first, Assad carefully puts the camera in its proper box. Thank you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for always helping me, thinks Assad. Okay, guys, let's go. The end. Now, here's the thing. What I love about this story is how much I, and I think you can probably relate to it. How many things have our parents gotten us that we've probably taken for granted? Maybe there was a toy car, or maybe a suit or a new dress, or maybe it was a stuffy or a baseball glove or a baseball bat. And instead of taking care of it and putting it where it belongs, what we did is we treated it like Assad. We just sort of threw it on the floor and didn't really care about it. There's two reasons why that's a problem. Number one, when you don't care for the things that you have, they break. But also number two, if we're not respectful and thankful for the things that we have, then maybe we won't get much more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, tells us that when we are thankful, when we're really appreciative, Allah gives us more. When we have things and we take care of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us more because we're showing that we're thankful. But if we have things and we throw them this way and that and we don't really take care of it, well then we won't get more things. Just like us as parents were worried about giving him the camera when he wasn't taking care of it. So look, the next time you come home and you're thinking about throwing your shoes this way and that, or maybe leaving your backpack or your jacket on the floor, I want you to remember this story and realize that as Muslims, we care for everything that we have. We're thankful for all of our blessings. And because of that, we take care of our things. Now, today's program is made possible because we've got a sponsor, Crescent Foods. Hassan recorded a quick video to talk about them. Mail delivery. More mail. Bills, bills, bills. Wow, the newest in our kids book, Humble Heroes, shipped directly to your home. Crescent Foods Chicken? Right, whoa. An apron and a cutting board. Oh yeah. Oh man, Shireen. Chicken tenders and chicken nuggets. If you go to shopcrescentfoods.com and use the code NURKIDS10, you can get delicious items just like this and grass-fed meat, all hormone-free, fully halal, delivered to your door. I love that, and I love chicken nuggets, and I love chicken tenders. I could talk about food because I'm very hungry, but I won't. What I will talk about is this. Sister, Sister Gina recently created a video where she teaches us how to create stop motion animated videos. I think you're gonna love it. Bismillah rahman rahim let's begin. How do I get an apple to eat itself? Stop motion is an amazing technique. Let's do it. Today I'm using nutritious food to make a stop motion animation and we hope to inspire you to eat healthy. The prophet, peace be upon him, is reported to have said, the good in this world is health and well-being. And the good in the afterlife is forgiveness and mercy. One of the ways that we show appreciation for our bodies is by taking care of it. Because if you don't take care of something that you have, it's as if you're not thankful for it. I made that animation to help my kids eat healthier. I used fruits and now I'm gonna try with vegetables. Every individual picture is a frame. And although similar, each one is slightly different. When the frames are flashed rapidly before your eyes, it blends together to create an illusion of a moving picture. So the first thing I wanna do is make a plan for what I'm gonna be taking a picture of. So if I have this green pepper, 
I'm going to think about it in the beginning, it's going to take a few steps and it's going to come into the picture. Then what I want to do is I want to rotate it. So it's going to need a few more pictures to turn it around. And I'm going to show you how to do it along the way. Let's get started. All right, so some of the materials that you're going to need are quite simple. If you have a tablet with a camera on it or a smartphone with a camera on it to take some pictures, there's so many different types of apps, but today I'm using Stop Motion Studio. So having a tripod is essential in keeping your camera steady, but you don't have to actually purchase a, a tripod. You could stack up a bunch of books or you could make your own rig by putting boxes together and having your camera bend over the top of them. Use your imagination. As long as it's stable and you don't break your camera, you're doing okay. What objects do you want to use in your story? Today we're using peppers and I encourage you to try something healthy too. So first you're gonna prepare your set of where the stars of your movie are going to be. I've got them on the table and I'm gonna create kind of a backdrop for them. Next, I'm gonna set up my tripod and I'm gonna think about what angle am I trying to shoot? Am I looking straight at them with my eye level or am I looking from above like a bird's eye view? For this shot, I wanna be looking straight on. So I'm gonna turn my camera and get it into place. All right, so I've downloaded the Stop Motion Studio app and I'm gonna open it up. So next you're gonna create a new uh, movie project by clicking on the plus sign. And there you'll be able to see the stars of your show. Okay, I'm just adjusting my camera a little to make sure that the stars of my show appear in the middle of my shot. So once you get inside your new movie, you'll notice that there is a question mark down here at the lower right. And this is really helpful. It shows you all the different um, things that you can reference. So in the settings of the capture, It'll pull up the different modes. The, the mode that I wanna work with is manual and that helps to keep the lighting uh, consistent and it automatically comes up as auto and so you just wanna select manual. So now it's time to start animating. So we're gonna take a picture and we're gonna move our object just slightly, just one frame at a time. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing this red button here, which is the camera button, and then I'm slowly turning it and taking another photo. And over on the side here, you'll notice this is what's called an onion skin. So it shows kind of a ghost. You can slide that down and you can see the ghost of the picture that you saw before. So that way you can always line it up in the same spot. Right? Stop motion is a slow process. So be patient and keep moving your object just in tiny little steps. Now, if we click on the play button, I'm gonna go back to the first frame. And if we click on the play button, we'll see what happens. My pepper took a spin. That's the magic of animation. We turned our pepper around and now the next step is I'm gonna take a bite out of it and gonna slowly eat it away and then it's gonna reappear as the orange pepper. But I'm gonna need a little help. Yeah. I think I should call in my son Omar. I really need your help. I am demonstrating how this vegetable can eat itself. But in order to do that, I need you to take some bites. Are you willing to do that for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. So you're gonna take a bite of this pepper, okay? And then I'm gonna put it back and take a picture of it. Mm -hmm. Take a big bite. Nice. Now I'm gonna take a picture. Hmm. I think I need some more bites. Could you take another one? Oh, thank you. Oh, two, a double. Oh, okay. Wow. That's giant one. I'm going to have this eaten in no time. Is it good? Oh, I bet myself. It's okay. No, it's real bad. 
Uh oh, it's no longer stable. So it's slowly starting to be eaten away. So we're showing parts of it missing. Turning it around. And now what I think what I might do is start. So what I'm first going to do is just take a picture of the orange one. But now you can't see the orange. Yeah, you will on the next picture. Watch. Magic. Yep, I can turn it and then take my hand out of the picture and then take the picture. I'm going to eat it. You are going to eat it? Are you sure? Yeah. I mean, these are vegetables, you know. What? <laughs> So here's the finished product. So that's it. That's how you make a stop motion animation. Why don't you try it at home and show us what you made? <sighs> Allahu Akbar. I don't think vegetables have ever looked as delicious. I don't know if you could hear that sound every time he bite it. It was like crunch, like it was just like juicy and fresh. And it was like in your mouth, it would have been just like so, it would have been like a little like firework factory and like, ah. The pleasure of watching people eat during Ramadan, subhanAllah. Anyways, um, that was really, really cool. I love these segments that we're doing with arts and crafts because I know so many of you guys are crafty. Now look, um, I am going to be announcing our giveaways, uh, which you can get a sense of what it is. Um, but before we announce it, I want to do two things. I want to take a view on Flip to see what the challenges are. Number two is last week I talked about um, you guys actually submitted things of how you want to make the world a better place. I actually want to read some of them so that way you can hear it. And then number three, I want to share a giveaway for tonight and end with a dua. Can we do that in eight minutes? No, we can't, but we're going to try our best. All right. So on Flip, there are a couple of amazing things here. Uh, the one that's brand newest is Show Us Your New York Kids Collection. Actually, I just put this up. If you're a part of New York Kids and you have a collection of books, I'd love for you to share them with all of us. So that way we can see them and hear why you love New York Kids. There's a lot of people over the next five days who, inshallah, are going to be trying Nora Kids for the first time, and we want to help them understand why it's so special. Thank you. We'd love for you to try your own stop-motion animation. And so um, you'll be able to follow the instructions that Sister Gina shared and put together your own videos. On Thursday, we have our program uh, where we are going to be praying for Palestine and also talking about what's happening there. So we've got two different challenges. One is the Pledge and Prayers for Palestine. The other one is the Heart Awakening artwork. That is going to be live up until tomorrow. After tomorrow, that's going to be shut down because we're going to be using those submissions in our class. If you want to be in that program, submit your work there and inshallah, we'll be able to share it. All right. Now, on Saturday and on Sunday, I asked you guys a question on YouTube, which, by the way, if you're not subscribed, you totally should subscribe to. And I said, tell us, how do you want to make the world a better place? And I told you that we would be selecting two different people, and those two people would get one-on-one -on -one coaching from the Islamic Scholarship Fund to help them get into college. Here's the thing. As I was looking at this list, and let me zoom in here and let you guys uh, come with me, you'll see that there's a lot of really, really good answers, okay? So um, I'm not going to read all of them, but I'm going to go through some of them. There's over 399 responses, okay? Uh, Eamon Nabil says, I want to make the world a better place by reading Quran and helping the poor, inshallah. Um, Wow, IDC, this was one of my favorite answers. She says, I want to become an author or a poet. I really admire J.K. Rowling. I'm a Muslim brother. I love how just one paragraph can change someone's whole perspective on life. As someone who loves to read books, I feel like books make me connect with the author. I feel what they and their characters are going through, whether that be pain or joy or sadness, etc. Words can make me reach the world, and I like the thought of that. 
I've been writing poems for one or two years and I really think I'm improving. That dream seems a bit unrealistic for me, but being an author probably isn't easy. To write, you need a lot of support. You guys, that was incredible. You know, there are poets who say that the pen is mightier than the sword. Brother, you need to pause. We get some pens. Can we switch mics? Yeah. Tell them that you're Hey guys, um, some technical difficulties on my microphone, so I'm going to switch my microphone, okay? Can you guys hear me? Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Yeah? Is this better? Cleaner? More crisp? Do you guys like the sound of this, Brother Amin? Yeah? It's better? Hmm. All right. <laughs> Shifa Hussein. Salam. My name is Shifa, and I'm a youth innovator and writer. My number one goal ever since I was eight was to make the world a better place with the help of the youth and the power of words. Because as the famous saying goes, the pen is mightier than the sword. SubhanAllah, I just said that. As someone passionate about coding, I'm doing what I can to tackle solutions on a global scale, one step at a time. Algae bloom detection to prevent water poisoning, Parkinson's device to alleviate tremors, and my very own AI inspired by Tony Stark's Jarvis, my favorite Marvel character. I aspire for more kids to see me and develop the same passions for the sciences as I do. Alhamdulillah, I founded my very first company which aims to teach STEM, that science, technology, engineering, and math, through an Islamic lens. Like I mentioned earlier, for the past four years, I've been an avid writer and a poet. I aspire for my works to become public so I can share my viewpoints as a Muslim schoolgirl facing society, especially with how things are now in the world. Jazakum Allah khair, and thank you for taking time to read this. What? Shifa, wow, I am so impressed. I am so impressed and we're so blessed to have you in our community. You guys are so smart. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Let's read this one. This is from The Chicken Club 2023. She says, I want to make the world a better place by helping others with problems like cancer and other bad things. My name is Tasneem and I'm 11 and my true dream is to be a doctor. What's happening in Palestine makes me cry really hard and I want everyone to go to Jannah and I can't do anything yet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all safe. I love that. I love that so much. You guys are so many good answers. I'll read one more here. Raz M. Khan says... My goal is to stop wars and stop brothers and sisters everywhere from being killed and hurt, to prevent kids such as those in Palestine having to live without their parents, to encourage people to not be slaves of wealth and help people learn about Islam. What's happening in Palestine is heart-wrenching for me. It makes my eyes well up. I want everyone to not have to suffer and go through anything uh, more than necessary in life. And I want much people to go to Jannah. My name is Yusuf and I'm 14 from the UK and this is my dream. I don't know how to achieve this, but with hard work and effort, I hope I can. I hope to go to university. And since I was young, I've had my eyes set on Cambridge. One day, I wish to unite the Ummah. Subhanallah, amazing. All right, so here's the thing, you guys. There's 399 of these. And I went through them. And I read all of them. And I commented on many of them. And I came to the dis decision, I cannot pick four of them. I just cannot. I just cannot. <gasps> I cannot do it. It is too much. It is too difficult. So what are we going to do? We've talked to the Islamic Scholarship Fund. And what we're going to organize is a program where all of you will, inshallah, be invited. And we're going to be talking about what it's like to get into college and what that process is like. By the way, your brother Amin, I went to Berkeley and I also went to Harvard and alhamdulillah, I have some experience that I can share as well. So after the month of Ramadan, we're gonna be organizing this program such that any of you who have aspirations to go for higher education will be able to give you a little bit of a look at how you can build a path to do that, inshallah. 
And so that way we can help you achieve your dreams. Now, speaking of dreams, many of you are dreaming of giveaway prizes. Giveaway, giveaway, giveaway. Millions and millions. So today, we are not going to give away one. We're not going to give away two. We're not going to give away three. We're not going to give away four. We are going to give away five of our Muslims Inventing Our World puzzle. That's $150 worth of puzzles. How can you get your hands on one of these puzzles? Well, it's simple. I mentioned to you that starting today and for the next five days, we're letting families try Noor Kids for $1. If you decide to order Noor Kids between today and tomorrow, and try Noor Kids for $1, we are going to be picking five of you at random and announcing them at our program tomorrow to get free Muslims Inventing Our World puzzles. If a dollar wasn't enough, inshallah, this is extra motivation to get it done and to try Noor Kids for the very first time. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, last year we used to do du'as every night before we would end the program. And this year we've had so much during our programs that we haven't had time. But today I want to take some time to raise our hands and give thanks. Today in our program we said when we give thanks, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us more. And with so much going on in the world and with each person going through their own challenges, I can't think of a better day to count our blessings. So I want you to raise your hands up like this. When we raise our hands up like this and we beg, it's like we're begging from Allah. We first call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His beautiful names, and then we will give thanks. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. By the way, I don't want to do this alone. I want you guys to raise your hands too and do it with me. Yeah? Come on, you guys, what's up? Come on. All right, let's do it. Let's see those hands up. Hands up, gentlemen. Come on. All right. Ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah. Oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, ya Allah. You are a razak, the one who gives us sustenance. You are Al-Wahhab, the one who is the most generous. You are Al-Wudud, the one who is the most loving. Ya Allah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Shukran lillah, shukran lillah, shukran lillah, ya Allah. Thank you for our family. For the mom that you bless me with, who loves me, who cares for me, who cooks for me, who hugs me, who kisses me on the cheek, who packs lunch for me when I go to school. Ya Allah, every moment she is praying for me, every moment she is thinking from, of me. When I close my eyes and think of her face, Ya Allah, it makes my heart happy. Ya Allah, thank you for my mother. Ya Allah, thank you for my father who loves me, who makes me giggle and makes me laugh, who reads me books before I go to bed, who always tries to cheer me up, who's like my protector and always keeps me safe. Ya Allah, thank you for my dad. Ya Allah, thank you for my grandma, my grandpa, who play with me, who teach me, who spoil me, who always make me laugh. Ya Allah, thank you for giving me them in my life. Ya Allah, thank you for the school that I'm able to go and learn in. For the teachers that I have who care for me, who give me knowledge, who help me learn. Ya Allah, thank you for the friends that you've blessed me with. Friends who give me company, friends who make me laugh and giggle, friends who help me when I need help, friends who are there for me when I am lonely and when I am sad. 
Ya Allah, thank you for my brother, my sister. Ya Allah, even though sometimes they can be annoying. Ya Allah, they are my best friend. I'm never lonely because I have them. They care for me, they love me, they always try to be there for me. Ya Allah, thank you. Ya Allah, thank you for the eyes you've given me that I'm able to see the whole world with. Thank you for the ears you've given me that I'm able to hear beautiful things with. Thank you for the lips you've given me that I'm able to recite beautiful things with. Ya Allah, thank you for my mouth that I'm able to eat delicious food with. Thank you for the food and for the drink that you have given me. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. If I tried to count all of your blessings, I could never count them. Ya Allah, you've blessed me with so much. Ya Allah, please accept my gratitude. Shukran Allah, shukran Allah, shukran Allah. Ya Allah, I could continue for days and days talking about every single blessing you've given me for the toys you've given me, the home you've given me, the health you've blessed me with, the doctors you've given me, the clothing that I have, the transportation that I have, the mind that you've given me, the heart that beats, the lungs that I breathe with, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ya Allah. You say in the Qur'an that when we give thanks that you give us more. Ya Allah, during these nights of Ramadan as I give gratitude. Ya Allah, whatever is good for me, please make it come to pass. And give me whatever you think is for the best. Ya Allah, send your blessings on our Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family and upon his companions. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, inshallah, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Goodbye, everyone.